So our end goal is to be in a spot where we're on our left foot, we're facing the throwing sector, and we're about to go to zero support, right? That left foot's about to come off the ground. That's our sprint position. That sprint position is key to, to executing far throws. That's, that's, just, that's just a piece of it. But unless we set that up correctly, our sprint position won't be that effective. And so uh, today's question is, how do you keep tension as you go around that foot in the back? There are two main problems. One uh, problem, let me see. One problem is the upper body is turning faster than the left, than your, than your foot is turning on the ground. So if you think about it, when we do that turn out of the back, we're turning on our left foot, that left foot, that heel needs to move forward, right? That's the first thing to happen in that heel. And then of course the knee and the left hip, that is the motor. That's what needs to be leading that movement. But what happens is, is that left arm, our upper body begins to turn faster than our foot. And that puts us in a poor position with, without tension. So that's problem one. The other problem that we run into here on this turn out of the back is our right foot stays on the ground too long. Now this is where the left arm, what I just said, it, and the right leg, they're very much connected. If you overdo it with your left arm and that's leading the throw, that right leg is gonna drag and it's just sort of a balancing effect. So if you're gonna overdo this, then that right is gonna stay, this is gonna stay put and um, kind of drag coming off, off of the ground. So let me do an example. If I go here and I keep the tension, you can see that I was under control. If you see here, I'm gonna lose the tension. See how those look different? What's going on is that left arm, that left shoulder is getting past and ahead of our left leg. Now two things are going on. One is the upper body is moving faster than our lower body. So in this part of the throw, when we're turning around the back of the ring, what's actually happening is our heel is moving forward. So then the foot, knee, and hip are all moving together. That movement right here. Well, if our upper body rotates faster than our lower body, that's gonna cause that shoulder and arm to get out, get out in the head. Then the second piece is our, uh, to lose tension is our right foot is on the ground too long or it's, it's turning on the ground. So again, one of the major concepts of keeping tension as you throw is what I call having strong hips. Such as keeping your knees apart, your hips rolled under you in a very strong uh, V position. And so if, if this upper body is moving too fast or, and or if this is staying on the ground too long, we end up in something like this. That's a very common position for to be in when you're messing up the back of the ring. Our ideal position is that as we start, that this heel turns, our arm stays, our left arm stays. I always like to say to keep the elbow inside the knee. So here, this would be the elbow past the knee this is elbow inside the knee. So you turn the foot, keep this elbow inside the knee, and keep the knees apart, keep this foot strong. And that puts you into a, a nice balanced position as you get around the left. Again, let's recap, there's two main problems when we're losing tension out of the back of the circle. One is that our upper body is moving faster than our lower body. And two is that right foot is staying on the ground too long. Uh, there are three things that we can do though to fix that and to work on. The, the first thing I, I think to work on is just simply our posture. And again, this is something that I touch on on the videos nearly every week. Posture plays that big of a role in this. But essentially, our posture in the back of the ring, we need to have our chest upright and again, in kind of flat that T position. So as we turn here, notice that this I'm gonna stay upright, and I'm gonna stay on top of my feet. So one is posture. If you maintain a strong, tall torso with level shoulders, that's what I mean by posture. 
then that will that keep that will help you keep that left leg the legs moving faster than the upper body the second thing to work on that we can do to help keep tension in the back of the ring is having strong hips that means keeping your knees apart that means as you turn your left foot in the back not letting this right leg twist in and this is very normal and then we don't pick the right foot up until we're here rather than keeping the knees apart so watch as the heel moves forward the right goes with it very strong and wide so again it's having this nice strong tall posture that's the one first thing we can do to fix it second is keeping the knees apart keeping your lower body strong you have to just be aware of that so as you're turning this foot forward keep that right leg strong keep it strong it turns and it comes off rather than turns and collapses and then, and then the, the third thing that you can do to work on <clears throat> keeping tension in the back of the ring in this first turn is essentially your left arm awareness so if you are tall you have level shoulders and you're keeping your knees apart you're keeping your hips strong but then the third thing to do is to be aware of your left arm know where it's at when you're practicing your turn if you're say you're you're throwing and you're falling over and you're not connecting on the sprint portion then you need to be aware of that left arm where what is your left arm doing is your left arm flying out of the back our ideal position with our left arm we want to keep the elbow inside the knee if we have our shoulders level and we keep this left arm in line with this left leg so no matter how fast we turn our left foot the left arm is going with it notice how this looks compared to this right so it's it's control it control the left arm that's something you can control so you make this first turn being aware of this left arm being aware of your posture being aware of your lower body and it's when you have strong posture strong hips and control over your left arm once those are all in place you can turn out of the back as fast as you want as long as those things are together and again, the reason why we're working on this is because the sprint portion of the throw. So like say I'm throwing towards you, this sprint portion is so important that we run forward that unless we get to it in a stable place, we won't actually be able to attack the sprint position. How would I practice those, those three parts? I would just simply practice by doing 180 degree drills or step out drills and just practice this over and over again because you have to get comfortable at turning the heel forward you've got to get comfortable having your hips under you you got to get comfortable being really tall like a t and really your ability to rotate and run hard into the throw is is just dependent on how balanced you are how comfortable you are in that last portion of of the throw all right, guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, head over to my website, bowmanthrows.com, to check out my latest training resource, the eight best drills for learning the full spin and discus. So go to my website, check that out, and um, you won't regret it. So you guys are doing great, and I'll see you on the next video.